Hello, today we're going to talk about stoichiometry, which is just a big word um, that means th we're going to use the ratios of different reactants or products in a reaction. So if we think back to our cheese sandwich, that's just our two to one ratio that we have um, for bread to cheese, for example. All right, so let's just review why we balance equations and why these ratios exist. And it's all because of the law of conservation of mass. So let's say we have this equation here. We have two silver atoms reacting with a sulfur atom to make Ag2S, one molecule, all right? Um, so if we add up the mass of our reactants, um, we know that silver from our periodic table is 107.868 grams, if we had a mole of it, and sulfur is 32.006. So if we add up all the mass of our starting materials, that would be one sulfur and two silvers, all right, which would be a mass of 247.802. Right? And then everything that we start with in our reaction must reappear on the other side as a product, right? We can't lose something, we can't create something out of nowhere. Um, and in the same way, we can calculate the um, molar mass of our product. We'll have two silvers and one sulfur, and we'll get the same exact mass that we had on the left. All right, so this is a pretty basic example. We just have um, a few atoms here to add up, but that should always be true if you have a balanced chemical equation. If you add up everything on the left side of the arrow, it should equal everything on the right side of the arrow. Right? And in order to use um, stoichiometry to do conversions, we need a balanced equation. So that's the very basic um, starting point that you'll need for any of these problems. All right. So in order to use um, these ratios, we have to make them into conversion factors. So for example, in our cheese sandwich example, if we have a ratio of bread to cheese, we know that ratio is two to one. I showed on that first slide, okay, which we can write as either two bread over one cheese or one cheese over two bread, depending on what kind of conversion we're doing. All right, similarly, we could have a ratio of bread to sandwiches, okay, um, so that would be a two to one ratio because we have a two here in front of our bread um, and then we just make one sandwich, all right, so that would have a similar um, ratio if we were to write it out as a conversion factor, right? The main point I want you to get here is that I, I know that like there's a two in front and the BR and the BR here has a two, right? But remember, this is all one thing. This is one molecule. Um, so with a simple example like this, it's easier to see, but it's not always so um, easy to tell, right? So now let's do an example with um, a chemical equation. So let's say we have two iron atoms reacting with three sulfurs to make um, Fe2S3. All right, so our ratio of iron to sulfur would be two to three because those are our coefficients in our balanced equation. And our ratio of iron to iron three sulfide, which is our product, is also is two to one. All right, so those two irons get put into one molecule or one formula unit of the iron three sulfide. Okay, so now that we have that, we can use that information to um, solve problems that get us from one um, kind of chemical, in this case moles of iron, to a different one. This one is asking for how many moles of sulfur. So just like the dimensional analysis problems we did before, the 1.42 moles of iron will go in the front, okay? And then our, in our conversion factor, we want moles of iron in the bottom, and moles of sulfur in the top, all right? And when we are doing a mole to mole ratio, the numbers that come beside them, or that we'll actually use in our calculation, are the coefficients from our balanced equation. Not subscripts, not the little numbers, they're the coefficients, the big numbers in front. And remember that if there is no number there, it just means there's, there's one, okay? So again, like just like we did in the, the um, the last unit, 1.42 times 3, because it's on the top, and then divided by 2, because that's the only thing on the bottom. All right, so now if we have um, 1.42 moles of iron, how many moles of iron 3 sulfide can we make? So this will be set up in a similar way. We'll have the 1.42 moles of iron in the front, all right, and then our ratio of iron to iron 3 sulfide is 2 to 1. Right? And then again, we'll just do the math. 1.42 times 1 divided by 2 gives us 0 0.71 moles of Fe2S3. All right, so now 
how would we combine this with what we've already done with grams, all right? So if we wanna go from grams of compound A or element A to grams of chemical B, how would we do that, all right? So we gonna, we're gonna make a plan. And this is always going to be the plan if we're going from grams of one thing in our chemical equation to grams of another thing. You cannot go straight from grams of one to grams of another. You have to go through moles to get there. Okay, so from grams of A to moles of A and moles of B to grams of B, those are the equations we did before. We're going to use the molar mass as our conversion factor because that tells us how many grams are in a mole, all right? And that, that, so that, that part should be familiar. We're going to now combine it with something new. And then anytime we're going from moles to moles, that's going to be our mole-mole ratio from our balanced chemical equation. All right, so now let's do an example. All right, so if we have N2 plus O2 gives us two NO molecules, how many grams of NO can we produce if 12.5 grams of O2 reacts? All right, and we're assuming here that we have enough N2 to react with all of that O2. Right, so in order to do this, this is just like the um, kind of problem we outlined on the previous slide. We'll need both molar masses and we'll need the mole-mole factor or the mole-mole ratio. Okay, so the molar mass of O2 from our periodic table would be just that. The molar mass of NO, we'd add up nitrogen and oxygen to get that. All right, and then our mole-mole factor, we make two NOs every time we use up one O2. So that would be our ratio. All right, so now um, I'll walk you through all the steps, but the 12.5 will always go in the front, whatever number is given in your problem. And here, just like in the last unit, I'm encouraging you to write the units for all of your numbers so that you can keep straight canceling the units out. So we have 12.5 grams of O2. So we'll need grams O2 in the bottom and moles O2 in the top because that's the, we want to get to moles of O2, all right? So the molar mass is how many grams are in one mole. So that number will go in the bottom with one mole in the top. All right, then we'll go from moles of O2 to moles of NO. So this is where our mole-mole um, ratio comes in. So we use one O2 every time we make two NOs, All right? And then one mole of NO is this number of grams of NO from our molar mass, All right? Note that there are times when you have a number of moles that is not one, but it's only when you have a mole-mole ratio. Anytime you are doing the number of grams in a mole, it will be one mole either on the top or one mole in the bottom, like over here. All right, so now 12.5 times 1 times 2 times 30.006, and then we'll do 31.998 times 1 times 1, and that will be our denominator. So it'll be the, all the product of everything on the top divided by the product of everything on the bottom and that'll give us 23.4 grams of NO. All right, here is another example. We have a balanced equation to start with. How many grams of O2 are required to react with 22.5 grams of C7H16, which is heptane, okay? I'm gonna ask you to pause here and see if you can get, get the molar masses you need. You should need two of them, all right? And the mole mole ratio you can, that you will need and see if you can set it up. This will have three parentheses, so three steps to get to the conversion from grams of one thing to grams of another. So go ahead and pause and see if you can do that, and then I'll go over it and you can um, ask me questions if there are things you don't understand. All right, so um, here is the whole problem set up, and I'll tell you where each number came from. So the 22.5 came from our problem, all right? If we're going from grams of pentane to moles, we'll need the molar mass. So this is adding up all the numbers from the periodic table for C7H16, all right? Then we'll go from moles of heptane to moles of O2, which is what we're trying to get to, right? Um, so one mole of C7H16, because there's no coefficient in front of this, requires 11 moles of oxygen, okay? And then one mole of oxygen has a mass of 31.998. Again, that is from our periodic table. All right, so when we do the math all out, multiply everything on the top, divide by the stuff on the bottom, you get 79.03 grams of O2. All 